Governors in the southwest geopolitical zone have proposed decentralization of the Supreme Court in the ongoing amendments to the 1999 Constitution by the National Assembly. In the memorandum, through the Southwest Caucus in the federal parliament, the governors are seeking the establishment of six more apex courts, one, each, one in each geopolitical zones. Nigeria, as we know presently, has one Supreme Court sitting in Abuja, the federal capital territory, which handles all the cases from the Court of Appeal. The proposed amendment will not only decentralize the apex court, but also legalize the authority of the Chief Justice of Nigeria over the courts in the country. Well, joining us to discuss this is Shina Fagwero. He is a legal pr pr practitioner and, of course, Biodu Shoumi, who is a political analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Can you hear me? Please unmute yourself. Yes, thank you very much. Bobby. Great, great, great. So I'm going to start with you, uh, Shina, because you are a lawyer. Um, this, on the surface, does really sound like a novel idea if it were to be taken up. Um, but um, does this in reality uh, work if the governors are proposing for it to be done and then if the National Assembly were to take it up as a bill and push it? Will, what, will, what good will it do for our justice system in the country? Well, you know, um, in terms of do definitely, I mean, in terms of decentralizing the justice system and reduce the public and the apex courts, right? Um, we're also in a state in this country where we have seen the, the uh, negative effects of over centralization in a pluralistic society. And it all goes within the vein of strong. Um, before the 1963 constitution was uh, suspended by the military, each region had its own uh, Supreme Court. And there was a limit to what the federal Supreme Court um, could advocate over. Uh, and I think this is the reason why uh, it's part of the reason why um, you, you know, the governors have proposed this. And it is in line with that, uh, you, know, you know, they are taking responsibility of the yearnings of the people of the South uh, that uh, need um, a bit more expression within the Nigerian Federation. The centralization, centrality of the Nigerian Federation has become stifling. It's stifling in the executive, it's stifling in the legislature, and has been stifling, stifling in judiciary. Uh, but however, in terms of the practicality of its implementation, I would like the government to also consider a number of other things. Uh, Mr. Fagwero, I'm sorry, uh, we're having we're having uh, connection issues. Like so, um, we're going, issue we're going to have to we'll have to we're going to have to hold on. Um, we can't really hear you. We're having connection problems, Mr. Fagwero. So it's difficult for us to compre uh, comprehend what you're saying. So we'll come back to you when we're able to fix that. Um, to you, Mr. Shomi, um, why do you think that this is stemming from? Because um, first, governors are asking we're asking for something um, that made it seem like they were looking for regional government all over again. And this is not the first time we're hearing um, something in this regard. But now they're talking about, you know, zoning these courts into different regions. Um, why do you think that the governors are advocating for this? Take into consideration. One is the administration of justice. And the second one is the dispensation of justice. In the first instance, it is an anomaly, you know, for a federal system of government, you know, to have a, a centralized judicial system of government. Because for the size of Nigeria and its composition and cooperation, um, it is almost um, an anomaly, you know, to have a centralized judicial system. So what the governors are trying to do now is 
They are looking at two issues. They've never had issues with administration of criminal justice, but the issue is about dispensation. You know, when you have a situation where people need to go to Abuja in order to, you know, appeal a case up to Supreme Court, um, it does not go well. In some cases, the cost of, you know, accessing the Supreme Court is so prohibitive that uh, many people tend to abandon, you know, the, those cases, even when they stand a good chance of winning in court. And that is not aiding the dispensation of justice. The other factor is the fact that when you have a centralized system of government and you have a decentralized, you know, uh, functions in terms of um, the criminal justice system, where the states have exclusive preserve on some, uh, particularly on the penal code, on some uh, um, issues. And you also have the law saying clearly that there must be issue of territorial jurisdiction. So where you have issues of territorial jurisdiction, you know, applying at the high court level, why should it be different, you know, at the Supreme Court level? Why must a case involving, you know, an incident that happened, for instance, in Southwest, you know, be, 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 be resolved at the Supreme Court level in Abuja? So these are some of the issues which the governors are looking at, apart from practicing true federalism. Hmm. That how do you ensure quick dispensation of justice? And currently, a case in the Supreme Court takes about five to seven years uh, from what many people have said. You know, to get resolved, you know, that's justice delay. Mm. We don't need that. We need a quick dispensation of justice. So it's important that the criminal justice system in Nigeria, you know, be rethink, which is what the governors are calling for, in a way to ensure that the administration of, uh, the, there is the ease of administration of justice and there is quick dispensation of justice in all matters, you know, affecting the populace. Mm. It also makes mention of the fact that it would it should empower the Attorney General uh, of the Federation. Does this mean that the Attorney General was not empowered in the first instance? Or was his yes. position more of a, a ceremonial one? Yes, we've seen the confusion from time to time. When it comes to justice, um, a, 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 anybody presiding over dispensation of justice or his administration must be seen to be impartial in all undertaking. What we have currently is that we have two offices combined into one. That is the Office of the Attorney General and the Minister of Justice. The Minister of Justice is a, perfect, is a political appointment made by the President of the country, who in any case is partisan. Uh, quite often it is only members of a particular party or ruling party that are appointed you know, as Attorney General. In the case of, no, sorry, as uh, Minister for Justice, in the case of Attorney General, this should be a professional office you know, for a lawyer, you know, to administer and preside over the dispensation of justice. It is uh, the role that you can say the Director of Public Prosecution and Commissioner for Justice. There should be two different roles. You mm -hmm. can't expect a partisan uh, Minister of Justice, you know, to also administer uh, the office of attorney general to preside over it. What quite often happens is um, you tend to have confusion. You have the attorney general being called into question, you know, being accused of partisanship, as we've seen in the case of um, the current attorney general, Malami. At times, the role is so confusing. At what stage will it cross from your partisan belief? At what stage will it affect your professional job? So we've seen so many examples of this that uh, many people point uh, and accuse the Attorney General and who is also the Minister of Justice of being uh, partial in some cases. So we really need to rethink it in a way to ensure that we can protect the office of the Attorney General of the Federation you know, from partisan considerations while at the same time, you know, uh, uh, make sure that um, the Minister of Justice, who is a political appointee, could also function in that role, you know, as the Minister of Justice. So I think it's a very good development. We need to separate them. Many countries you know, practicing democracy do not have them fused together like we did in Nigeria. So I think that would be a good development. All right. Mr. Fabuero seems to be back. Let's go back to um, what you were saying. Mr. Fabuero, yeah. um, the last guest just said <laughs> that, you know, it's a great thing to be able to separate 
the um, duties of the Attorney General of the Federation and, of course, other issues, especially the fact that, you know, he's a political appointee. Uh, but let's look at the fact that we say that we are a federal government and yes. we are running on a unitary system of governments of sorts. Yes. And our constitution seems to be all over the place. Um, yes. So introducing this into the constitution, what system of government does that now amount to? Because we seem to be all over the place too, in terms of our system of government. Well, it, it's curious. It, it's, it's, you're very correct by saying that our constitution is all over the place. It is all over the place because in the first place, it's not fit for purpose. Uh, the issue of the Attorney General and the Minister for Justice, clearly, um, my brother, the speaker who spoke before me, is absolutely right. Um, I think the Attorney General's position is strictly professional. As a matter of fact, the Attorney General should have the powers to be able to institute prosecution against anyone in government without the prompting or the disturbance of the president or anyone in the executive. The Minister for Justice, on the other hand, has a responsibility to relay the government's justice agenda. Hmm. You know, and these things used to be the case. Take, for example, um, prior to 1966, when the 1963 constitution was abrogated, you had the director of public prosecution and um, the director of pros public prosecution was actually the apex prosecuting officer mm -hmm. in the in the regions then and he was well independent of government he was well independent of government in power but as i was saying before i i got cut off by my wife you know the wi-fi thing the last time this time around there are certain things i would need to that i would hope we will see before the implementation of either having decentralized Supreme Courts or separation of the offices of the Attorney General from the Minister for Justice. Mm -hmm. For us to be truly qualified to be a federation, the states or the federating units themselves must have constitutions. Mm -hmm. That is the major and the fundamental flaw or of our federation right now. But states, but sta but states already problem. have laws and edicts and acts. So, I mean, so why yeah. do they need to have a full-blown constitution? They, the they have law. Yeah, I, I do agree. They have laws and edicts and acts. But you can't have specific written law for the federation. And then the state laws are all over the place. Okay, let them consolidate them into a law. Let them consolidate them into a constitution because what a constitution should do should be able to define rules for the judiciary, the legislature, and the executive. Mm -hmm. How they be governors, that is how they are elected and how they are made accountable. For example, in the judiciary now, you have a double accountability on the side of judges. Mm. And it's part of the 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 mess that our constitution is in. So what I mean is that when we had, there is no federation on earth, except Nigeria, that has its federating units not having a constitution. When we were a true federation prior to 1966, January 15, or whenever they decided to suspend the constitution, each of the regions had its constitution. And that constitution provided for judiciary, including a supreme uh, 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 Chief Justice. Okay. But it also provided for relationships between the regions and the Federation. But the point we are trying to drive at here, the issue of separation for justice, uh, Minister for Justice and Attorney General is a question of equity and justice. And, the and, issue... And in, uh, and in closing, Supreme because, Court, because we're running out of time, we're talking yes. about equity and justice. Can we yes. find it? Or is this just a starting point? Is this the road to getting that equity and justice or fair play if this becomes, you know, a bill that is passed into law? 
Well, you see, development is a brick by brick. It's a building block by building block. We learn and then we make mistakes and then we correct them and then we go on. Life is not static. So the point is that where we have make a mistake is where we see the problem and we are not responsive to the problem. Okay. This particular constitution that we sit on in Nigeria now is predicated on certain factors that we, that will make us fail as a federation. Okay. And it will also even make us fail as a central government. So it doesn't go either here nor there. Okay. So constitutional amendments, fine. Restructuring, fine. For me, it's there's a lot it's of a semantics there. We have to but go. But the fundamental fact is that we must do something. Okay. All right. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for being part of the conversation. Unfortunately, time is not our friend. Uh, Biodo Shomomi is a political analyst, um, and um, Shino Fagwenro is a legal practitioner. Thank you so much for uh, shedding light on this uh, issue. My pleasure. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all for being part of the conversation. I will see you tomorrow on Plus Politics. I am Mariana Cohn. Have a good evening.